Hey, Shalom. I want to give all praise to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakaq, Um This is more of a GMS, any quickening spirit, a GMS um, in transit. Uh, coming from the plantation, you know. So, um, just meditating on some things. Uh, you know, there's there's trials and tribulations we go through. You know, this this spirit, the spirit just kind of moved somewhere else just now. You know, but we're still on the subject matter. But there's there's trials and tribulations we go through, and um, these you have to see them as tests. You know, in order to not lose character and remain focused on a task at hand. Um, no one's special. To the point that you deserve a uh, an excuse for for your folly or for your uh, misconduct or for your shortcomings, um, whatever situation it may lay. You know, um, like the scriptures say, no sins, no sin goes unpunished, right? So everything is is, is judged by the Lord, whether good or evil, as we read in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, right? So. We always have to be mindful of what we're doing, you know what I'm saying? And another thing is that we're at the latter end of this thing, so it's going to get harder. The rules are going to get harder. Satan's going to come at different angles and um, try us in different ways. So um, going into 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11, really the whole chapter goes in because it starts out, says, you know, the last day should come scoffers, all right? But um, this is the point I wanted to get. It says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in, in all holy conversation, uh, conversation and godliness? And as we know, the word conversation there means conduct, the way you carry yourself. All right? Knowing that the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, via Yahweh Shai, is going to be coming back his second coming in his glory to bring destruction on Babylon, and the so-called white man, and the two-thirds, and um, heathen that uh, are, are counted for that judgment. The Lord is coming with his host to bring violence and destruction and, and mourning upon these people, okay? So what bracket would, do, would you want to fit in? And of course you want to fit in the bracket of the righteous. Now, the, the next question is, you know what I'm saying? What are the keys to being righteous, man? What are the keys to be considered a righteous man? One of the keys is that you got to be an Israelite first and foremost. That's the main key. The second key is your conduct, the way you carry yourself. All right? Now, now we're creatures subject unto vanity. So that's why I wanted to do this lesson. Because there's a specific word in this passage that I'm reading that I get to that point all right so reading on it says uh looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the most high wherein the heavens being on fire shall shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the heaven is talking about is talking about the uh the kingdom of Babylon the kingdom of the daughter of Babylon which is America all right, these elements are going to be melted with fervent heat. These missiles are going to drop and turn this place into a lake of fire. All right. So, uh, and no, it's not. It's not talking about a rapture where you, you, a random, random niggas who called upon the name of the Lord get salvation without having any a, a, accreditation of works, any, any, any proof of, of their true belief in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That that's not true. All right, that's not happening. You gotta work for this. The way the Lord set up life, you don't think that coincides how He set up the uh, uh, the salvation? When you gotta work, you gotta work hard to get to get what you want. To get what you want, the whole idea of an internship that the Lord put the Spirit on on, you know, whoever created that idea that you're basically working off of faith, hoping that you'll get. The employment of that job and based off your skill set and your work ethic you will have that confidence that you will get that job 
and whatever that person's putting you through is preparing you for that job? You think the Lord did, uh, didn't create that type of mindset and, and just willy-nilly, you know, got things going on in life? You know what I'm saying? No, man, uh, it's not like that. The Lord set these things up, man. You know what I'm saying? Everything in life is, is here for a reason. All right? So, um, asshole here looking. You're driving too fucking fast, man. Not letting nobody maneuver in traffic. Esau, you get mad, you get mad when you cut him off because he's fucking flying, man. You know? But, um, verse 13, it says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, who's, who's according to the promise? What Romans 9... Nine um Salakia so like Romans chapter nine. Uh, um, I can't I can't point at the particular verse, but it's in the beginning of Romans chapter nine, when uh, Paul said, according to the flesh, you know who are Israelites. Before that, he says, who pertain to promise, their adoption. That that's that's Israel. Okay. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for a new for new heavens. And a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Does that mean it's going to be a whole new globe? Like the Lord is going to uh, blow this place to smithereens and, and create a new globe? No, because the Lord said the earth abided forever. Right? A new heavens and a, a new heaven and a new earth. He's not going to establish a new spiritual world. No, this place is considered a heaven. This kingdom is considered a heaven. The white man's heaven is the, the black man's hell is a, is a term, right? So it says, nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heaven and a new earth. We're, we're not looking to get to, to live in America and enjoy ourselves and to just go to the go to the spirit world and consider that salvation. Going to the spirit world is a beautiful thing, but the salvation is based off of the destruction of the so-called white man via thermonuclear missiles and World War III famine and pestilence and plagues and uh, uh, amongst many other things. Uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, last but not least, the uh, uh, Yasha Ali, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans being a battle axe uh, following, the, following the suit of Yahweh Shai who's gonna, who's gonna drench his garments as though he was stepping in the wine press. All right? That's, that's what we're waiting on. That's, that's the process of new heaven and the new earth. That's why Jacob held a hill of Esau. All right? It says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Um, this is the point here. Wherefore, beloved, all right, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent. That's what I wanted. Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless that you know to be diligent is to basically persevere is to no matter the obstacle you stick at you stick to the task that task at hand because i'm saying that because we not only we we receive obstacles um i said on the highways that there's no problem with recognizing defeat but there is a problem with accepting defeat. You know what I'm saying? We all uh, have shortcomings, we all have done things, but when you accept the fact that you ain't shit, then you're basically saying you don't have the capabilities of being a man of the Lord. And that's what Satan does, man. You know, you take losses. You're gonna fuck up, you're gonna get chewed out, you're gonna get cursed out by someone of a higher rank or the Lord himself, or the Lord gonna put sit you, sit you on your ass, man, and reveal and reveal the wickedness within you. And he'll reveal that wickedness within you, you know what I'm saying? And that's how that's how the Lord works. You know what I'm saying? And that shouldn't discourage you from from being uh from working hard, man. A man that it says a man that falls seven times, get up seven times. If you if a man sins and he repents, you forgive him seventy times seven. This, this thing is a process, this thing is a struggle, this thing is a fight, this thing is a straight, a straight path, straight and narrow path, a very hard and rigorous road, all right? So it's okay uh, to, to, to recognize your L, but don't accept failure, you know what I'm saying? P 
people, too many people make, oh man, I, I've been this how I was raised, so that's why I do this. Or, or she did this, so that's why I did that. You know what I'm saying? No. The, Satan gonna give you, uh, the Lord is gonna allow Satan to put you in a lot of situations. And that's key word, the Lord will allow Satan to, to put you in situations to, to, to test your character, basically. You know, for lack of better words, to test your might. And you will have all the reason to fail that test, logically. And, and you, you have all the reason to accept it in your mind. So our job is to, is to you know what I'm saying, strive for perfection. And when it's, like, like the Lord said, it's thankworthy to suffer wrongfully, you know what I'm saying? And, and still remain, you know, still remain righteous. And even though it's talking about someone of a, of a rank that you're dealing with in your camp or leader or things like that, or your master, so to speak. But it also is talking, you know, you can correlate that with, with the trials and tribulations you go through. Instead of making excuses for your shortcomings. Everybody got, an excuse, like I said, excuses like an asshole. Everybody got one. You know what I'm saying? Never accept your excuses or never accept, accept your shortcomings. Always, you know, be cons basically being diligent is being consistent at what you're doing. From my personal experiences, when I go through something uh, 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 very either depressing or uh, uh, um, negative, you know, from anger to uh, frustration to just being getting fucked clean over by the world, by Esau, by society, or by whatever, then my spirit gets 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 on fire to be even more righteous. You know what I'm saying? And I said to myself, "Hey man, why I gotta why I gotta wait for something like this for my spirit to be on fire like that?" You know what I'm saying? Because when it's not, you know, like scripture say, a man a man forgets sorrows when he's in prosperity. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you supposed to act as though you know treat your treat. You supposed to be in that mindset that when you get fucked over by society or life. The, that mindset you're in then, you're supposed to be in that same mindset and prosperity. And that will create consistency. Another thing that will create consistency, which is relative, relative to diligence, is making it a habit to do the things that you've read. Apply the things that you've read in every aspect that you can possibly apply it in where it's properly fitted. You know what I'm saying? You don't just randomly put it anywhere in your life. Like it says, give alms. You don't just give alms to anybody. You got to go with the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? If you got it, you got it. You don't, you don't. You know, you get my drift. You should. So you have to, uh, you should want to apply it as much so you can create a habit. Not only you create a habit, but you create experiences to, to know, okay, don't do it like this. Okay, do it like this. You know what I'm saying? Experience is the best teacher. You know, there's no way you read it and then when the time comes, you you can automatically apply these things. Some things require faith, but a lot of these things can be uh, uh, executed within life. You know, I, I see guys claim that they love the Lord and get in lineups. And you'll say that you're willing to die behind the Lord, but wait, you're getting lineups. No, wait, you're eating pork. You can't give up pork, but you say you can give up your life. How can you do that? How can you say you can give up your life when you ain't you ain't even practicing giving up the little bitty things? You know? So this that's the point I'm alluding to is to be consistent or aka be not can I can't say aka be diligent, aka be consistent and perse and persevere uh with these with with righteousness. Every day is an opportunity. Every moment is an opportunity. From when I'm doing this lesson, that was an opportunity. When I get off this lesson, there's another opportunity that will approach itself as I walk inside my house. You know, I can pick up my sword, read, eat my food, go to sleep, you know, do, you know what I'm saying? And then another opportunity will strike itself. It's constant opportunities that will, that will come to you uh, on this journey of ours, man, until, until salvation, Lord willing. So every, and if we make the most, cause you won't, you won't be able to do it in perfection. It's not like I'm gonna go in there, read, go to sleep, or eat, go to get cleaned up, go to sleep, wake up, read, uh, get a, um, listen to some lessons, get a fire breakdown, break it down, 
uh, uh, go do whatever I got to handle some business, come back, um, chill with my family, and it don't work like that. Everything don't work at 100, but, you know, you should strive to have a, 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 a strive for perfection. You know what the journey that the Lord puts you on. Your spirit should tell you, get up and do this, get up and do that. And if it's not telling you that, maybe your filter is dirty. Maybe you're not praying or reading or, 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 or your, your pineal gland is cal calcified to the point your connection with the Lord is, is faint. And you need to clean it up with fasting, prayer, reading, and righteousness. You know? So I just wanted to put that out there. Hopefully you brothers were edified. Uh, I want to say y'all by Shimi Al Shai, by Shimra Kakwadash, double onside apostles, a habatham, zaquayim, wa'akim, uh, and shalom.